experiment, we're going to mix different metals with some acid. Now the theory here is that metal and acid make a salt and some hydrogen gas. So I'm hoping when we put the metals in, we'll be able to see if they're fizzing. And if they're fizzing, it's reasonable to assume that they're producing hydrogen gas. Now we'll probably collect hydrogen from, or collect the gas from one of them at least, and test it to confirm that it is hydrogen. But we won't need to do it for, with every single one. We'll just look and see if we can get bubbles. So the metals that I'm testing are magnesium, zinc, iron and copper. So I'm going to put some of that metal into each tube um, and see if we get any bubbles coming off. Okay. There's some magnesium in the first one. That's bubbling like mad. So I'm going to put a tube there ready to collect any gas that's coming off from that. If I'm assuming correctly that it's hydrogen, I know hydrogen is, is less dense than air, so the hydrogen should work its way all the way up into this top tube and get stuck at the top because this one's upside down, so it can't get out. I'll carry on collecting that, and I'll come back to you in a minute when it's finished reacting. Pretty much finished. You can see there's still a tiny amount of fizzing going on there. And this tube has actually got quite hot around where the magnesium was reacting. So you might like to think of the word we use for reactions that produce heat. I'm going to stop in a sec. I think that's probably collected all the gas that it's going to make. And I'm now going to use a lit splint to see if I get a squeaky pop from the gas I've collected. And I think that was a pretty convincing squeaky pop. So I'm going to carry on now adding metals to the remaining tubes. So this one is zinc powder. So I'm going to put a little bit of this in with my um, acid in the tube. Okay. I'll keep an eye on that. You can see it's immediately not such a vigorous reaction as I got with my magnesium. Middle tube, I'm going to put um, some iron powder. Okay. And I'm going to put some copper in the final tube. I don't think I need the spatula for this. zinc has taken a little bit of time to get started. I think if you can do a close-up on that, you should be able to see that there are lots and lots of tiny little bubbles forming in this. And sometimes there's enough bubbles stuck to the zinc powder that you can see clumps of the zinc powder rising up to the top until the bubbles are released and then they fall back down again. So it's fizzing away in there. So we should be able to make a deduction about the gas that we can see forming. Now this one has got iron mixed in with it. And this one also, you can see fizzing in the tube. So we should be able to make a deduction there also about the gas that's forming. Now the copper at the end is just sitting there doing absolutely nothing. Okay? And even if I've got powdered copper, even if I try warming the acid, it's still going to sit there and do nothing. It just does not react. And you might like to have a think about what sort of things we use copper for, precisely because it's a very unreactive metal. You might have noticed that some people wear copper as jewellery, you might have seen copper bracelets, and you're probably familiar with copper being used to transport water to your taps or for your central heating system in your home. We wouldn't be able to use copper for those purposes if it were reactive at all. So this shouldn't be a surprise that the copper is sitting here not reacting at all.